But let me guess, the reason you're here is because you want to be the official team photographer for a sports team and you've got questions. Well, you're in luck, you came to the right place because I've got answers. Hey guys, welcome back and some good news to just start off this video. We've just passed 3,000 subscribers here on the channel. That's right, 3K in the books. That's awesome. Super happy to pass this milestone and really appreciate the support and you guys following along and finding these videos interesting and informative enough to keep this going. And keep in mind, this is just the beginning. 3,000 is just a start. We're gonna keep growing. We're gonna keep adding great content. So stay with us here on the channel. And for those of you who don't know, my name's Billy and I am the team photographer for the Boston Red Sox. I've been in that role since 2012, so I'm in my 10th season as the head team photographer for the Boston Red Sox. And over that course of time, I get all kinds of questions about the role, not just with the Red Sox, but in general. What does it take to become a team photographer? And what are the steps that I need to take? Or what are the things I should know if I wanna become a team photographer myself for some other sports team in either baseball or another league? So I am going to compile a list of the top 10 questions that I get. These are the questions that I get all the time, the most common questions, and put them all together in this video and hopefully it helps you out. Okay, question number one is, do you travel with the team? You know, it's funny. This is like the first question that anyone asks me when they find out that I'm the team photographer. For some reason, it's like the burning question that's on everyone's mind. So we're starting off with this question. And the answer is, yes, I do travel with the team. However, I do not travel every single game. Baseball is definitely a unique sport in that we play 162 games a season. And quite frankly, that's just too many baseball games to photograph. From a lifestyle perspective, it's nice to just have a little bit of a break after shooting a seven to 10 game homestand and get some time to recover and relax when the team is on the road. But that being said, any sort of important event throughout the season or any milestone event, you better believe I will be there traveling to cover off on it to make sure we have that record. So every year I'm down in Fort Myers for spring training for a couple weeks and then throughout the season, there are always some landmark events that happen along the way that I do travel for like the All-Star Game, any sort of playoff clinching scenario, any sort of playoff action, I am there 100% of the way for every single game. And also if our players are going to hit some sort of career milestone or big moment that's going to fall while we're on a road trip, I'll definitely be there to cover that. And then finally, if there's some sort of cool road trip we're going on, maybe to a, a great city that offers some sort of unique perspective of something that we can shoot with our players, or a city with one of those iconic ballparks like a Wrigley Field or Dodger Stadium, those are the road trips that I like to go on. So the short answer is no, I don't travel every single game, but yes, anything important, you better believe I'll be there. Okay, question number two, do you know the players? Yes, I do know the players. And this is something that is part of the job as a team photographer, no matter what team or league you are working with. You spend so much time with the athletes every single day, observing them and watching what they do that it's only natural that you are going to get to know the players on a personal level and a professional level. I believe that the most effective way to do your job as a team photographer largely hinges on your ability to make and maintain meaningful relationships with the players. Those relationships that you build and foster over the course of time are what allows for that unique and intimate access once you get that level of trust, that level of mutual respect from the players, they will allow you into their lives and into those behind the scenes moments, both at the field and away from it in their own lives. And that's what makes for the really great storytelling. And that's what the beauty of the team photographer role is versus a newspaper or a newswire, some sort of outside photographer. So yes, I know the players. In most cases, it's on a working professional relationship, but in some cases for players that have been with us for a long time, it does naturally turn into friendships and people that I genuinely stay in touch with and like to talk to over time. Number three, do you shoot every single game at Fenway? Not entirely. We're very lucky at the Red Sox that over time, we've been able to build out a very talented staff of photographers so that we can kind of divide and conquer on everything that's happening at Fenway Park. And although I am the senior manager of photography, we have an incredibly talented staff of photographers that I trust entirely to go out and document whatever they need to do. So 
We try and mix it up just to maintain our own sanity and not get burnt out over the course of the season. So we'll rotate game by game, night by night, whatever's going on at the time, we just kind of fill in and we help each other out and pick each other up so that we're not all just constantly grinding every single day, day after day. But anything important, anything big, we're all out there shooting all at once because none of us wanna miss out. It's called FOMO. Another great question here is, do you sell your pictures? Can I buy a picture of yours? Can I buy a print of some picture that I saw in your portfolio that I like? The direct answer is no, you can't. All the photos that I take are copyright property of Major League Baseball and the Boston Red Sox. And this is a model that teams in general are going much towards now versus what they were doing in the 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s. A lot of teams are moving toward a full-time team photographer role, so like a salaried team photographer role where they're on full staff and they have full access to everything. But the trade-off being the team, the league, owns the copyright to every single photo that gets taken. So that's kind of a general trend right now in sports photography when you're looking at the team photographer realm and that's how we are set up at the Red Sox. Now that being said, we do license our images through Getty Images and we are able to make royalty sales off of those photo sales through the wire. So if you see a photo you like, there are a couple places that you can go check them out either on Getty Images or on the MLB Photo Store. Those are a couple of places that you can license your photos and download prints at a somewhat reasonable cost. But the long and short of it is I can't sell you a photo directly. If I could, well, I'd probably be a rich man. Halfway there and a question on a lot of people's mind, especially in Title Town here in Boston is do you get a ring, a World Series ring? Yes. I feel extremely grateful and honored to have received not one, but two World Series rings during my 10 years with the Red Sox. We won the championship in 2013, and then again, another World Series championship in 2018. And luckily, both of those years, the front office was really taken care of, and we all did receive World Series rings. These are awesome family heirlooms because they've got the last name on the side of the ring. These are something that I treasure and cherish. Very cool perk of the job and not something that I take for granted, not something that I take lightly, and not something that I'm gonna tell you where I keep them, so don't ask. Ooh, I love this one. This one gets a little bit deeper, a little more into the psyche of a photographer. Do you ever get sick of shooting the same thing over and over again? It's a really great question and to be honest with you, the candid answer is yes, I do. It's really hard to shoot the same type of thing over and over again, especially in a sport like baseball where you've got 81 home games, 162 per season, and it's nonstop day after day after day for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days in a row. No matter what sport you shoot, if you are a team photographer, at some point in your career, you will hit this point, this wall, where you're like, I've just shot the same thing over and over again. There's nothing creative left in the tank. But those are the times you really need to dig deep and think differently about how you're shooting and think about things in not such a literal way. So am I not just shooting the game action? Am I going behind the scenes? Am I doing some stuff with the players off the field? Am I getting into more advertising campaign style of photography with our players? There's a million different ways that you can spin the ball. So you just have to continue to push yourself creatively. And I think that's a fun challenge, but also one that definitely can be frustrating at times. So if you're thinking about the team photographer role, just do keep in mind, end of the day, you're shooting the same basic thing over and over and over again, and it's on you to make it look different every single day. Basic one here, but a good one. Are you on the field? Do you go on the field to shoot? Yes, I do. I have all access to pretty much anywhere I need to go now. That is access that, again, takes a level of time and trust to build up on your end and relationship building to make sure that people involved with the stadium operations, the team operations, are comfortable with you being in those scenarios. So although technically the role allows for that access, it's still a process that you have to go through to kind of make sure that you've cemented your place within your ballpark or within your stadium to make sure that you're cool with everyone who needs to sign off on it. It's actually a really hard question for photographers. No matter what type of photographer you are, I feel like people wanna ask you this question and I think it's a tough answer for a lot of photographers because one, you don't really just have a working 
thought of your portfolio on call ready to go when someone brings up the topic. You kind of have to think about, okay, what's actually in my portfolio, first of all? I don't even remember what I've shot because I've shot so many things. But I feel like a lot of the great photographers really are never satisfied with what they've done. They always feel like something could have been done better and the boundaries could have been pushed a little bit more. Now, of course, there are a couple shots in my portfolio that stand out in my mind as great shots. Andrew Benintendi inside the Green Monster, David Ortiz in tears as he's retiring, playing his last professional game. Mookie and David in the tunnel, helicopter rides at sunset over Fenway Park, winning the World Series on the field in 2013 and 2018. Those are moments that stick out as really great images and definitely up there as my favorites, but I don't have one favorite. It's just impossible to choose. And the real truth is I'm always looking for that next one. And there's this misconception that once the season's over, you just sit around and you don't do anything and you wait around for three months and then spring training rolls around and then you're back into it and you just have your winters off. And <laughs> at least at Fenway Park, that couldn't be farther from the truth. We have a ton of things happening over the winter. You know, Fenway, we've been really lucky to turn the ballpark into more than just a place to play baseball. It's now this hub of Boston for all types of events. So usually over the off season, We've got corporate events coming in. We have football, hockey. We've even had a big air ski and snowboard ramp in Fenway Park. And as the team photographer, at least here, you are also kind of serving as the house photographer for Fenway Park as a venue, not just the Boston Red Sox and what's involved directly with the team. So I've got to cover all of these events in the off season. And there's also just a lot of planning and strategic meetings that go on as far as how we're going to approach our content for the upcoming season. And because we have a little bit more downtime during the off season, that's the time that we can really get ahead of this strategy and really plan out what we're going to do from a yearly campaign standpoint. And last but not least, one of the most popular questions, are you hiring? Can I become one of the Red Sox team photographers? How can I help you? How can I join your staff? Well, right now we aren't hiring, but we do offer a photography internship every year at the Red Sox. We actually offer two of them. And so I would encourage you, if you are interested in getting into the field, to be on the lookout for that application. It's typically out around December or January during each year. And that's when we're looking through great portfolios and we wanna see a great body of work. In general, that is the best way to break into the field of sports photography if you wanna go the team or the league route. A lot of teams around the league and around other sports leagues offer photo internships with their team photographer or with their content team. And that's the perfect way to start to learn how to do the craft and also network and figure out how the business side of photography within the sports realm worked. That's how it worked for me. I was an intern with the Baltimore Orioles under their very talented team photographer, Todd, in 2009. And that got my foot in the door and that really solidified for me that this is what I wanna do with my career and this is how to get it done. So that worked for me and I encourage you if you are interested in getting into the team photographer game to look for the internships out there and we've got a good one right here in Boston. So I hope you guys found this entertaining. I hope you found it helpful. Hope you found it kind of a cool behind the scenes look at what we do and for me this is therapeutic because anytime these questions get sent my way i'm just going to send them this link to this video and you've got everything you need to know right here so thanks for checking in thanks for hitting 3,000 subscribers with us i super appreciate it if you like what you saw please give the video a thumbs up if you have any questions at all about the role about team photographer sports photography in general please drop it as a comment down below. Always love hearing from you and make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We're pushing on, now get out there and let's make it happen, people.